Well, let me just start off by saying very, very clearly, no means no. Silence never means yes. Um, yes means yes until someone says no. That much is pretty obvious. That much, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the creepy guy in the elevator, um, or at least subjectively creepy guy in the elevator, can accept. Um, and that's the point that at least that Feminist Horror is making is that it's not necessarily about fear of rape. But there does have to be an extent to which someone hitting on you can't be a thought crime. I mean, I don't like when men hit on me. I really don't. And it does happen. Um, and I very quickly say, no thank you, I have a girlfriend and leave it at that. And if I wasn't in a relationship, it'd be, no thank you, I have a girlfriend. Or, you know, not until you take estrogen, cutie. Um, and leave it at that. Um, people do need to be allowed to ask. And there is a difference between asking someone in a perilous place and asking someone outside of a public place or away from a crowd. Um, I know oftentimes I wouldn't be comfortable asking someone out, you know, in a room of 40, 50 people and I'd want to have a moment where I could speak to them alone. And if that creeped someone out, you just have to tell them. You really just have to tell them. and. Then when there's a refusal to stop, that's when things become not just problematic, but flat out fucking disrespectful and wrong. Um, yeah, there's, there's not much more to say there other than my big problem with this kerfuffle has been the villainization of a guy um, at a conference for asking someone out. Yes, it was at four in the morning, you know. Um, this tends to happen at conventions and conferences, is that's when a lot of late night hooking up happens. You know, that two intelligent people have fucked at a political convention before is not news to me in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's done. It's de rigueur. It's not to be expected, but it's not outside of the realm of acceptable activity. Um, just because we are professionals does not mean we are then, in a professional realm, asexual beings. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, you know, I I don't think that someone has carte blanche to ask any, to proposition anyone or ask anyone out, but we do have to understand that before there is a no, or before there is some signaling that there ought to be a no, um, not that yes is presumed, but that at least the right to ask is there, um, to some extent. And, and you can say, well, you make me feel uncomfortable, please stop, I don't want to talk to you for the rest of the conference, fine. But you can't, you can't castigate someone for being a little bit awkward, creepy, and asking someone out at four in the morning for a coffee. You know, it's there. There are times when there are times when we confuse um, heterosexuality with a culture of access. The two are not completely alike. You know, there's a Venn diagram. There's a lot of overlap. You know, I'd be really, really upset if this guy had then immediately responded by, you know, calling her a hottie bitch or, or what have you, and just, you know, shaming her for daring to say no. But that's not what happened. Someone made an awkward advance in an elevator that was, you know, one can infer it was a sexual advance, but it wasn't explicitly so. We are really making an awful lot of very little, and... This sort of stuff does cheapen the discourse to an extent. You know, we don't have the right not to ever feel uncomfortable. Um, if we did, then I, 
I mean, there'd be so many morning shows off the air. Bye-bye.